Dear all, welcome to this short tutorial dedicated to DaVinci Resolve 17, the best and free video editing software developed by Blackmagic Design. Please visit our YouTube channel and our official website to get extra news, tips, troubleshooting, and much more for free. DaVinci Resolve is an outstanding software with the full set of features you can ever need, from basic ones to realize simple videos, to the most advanced post-processing effects and corrections, all in one place. In this video, we will use the free version, but you can upgrade to the Studio One to get loads of additional plugins, HDR grading, neural filters, and more. When you open Resolve, you get into the Project Manager page, where you can start from any existing project. These are all collected inside the local database on the left, unless you create others with new database at the bottom. To start with Resolve, go to New Project and define any name. This opens on the main interface, showing several workspaces available at the bottom. With Media, you can import, organize, and manage your files. With Cut, you can trim these precisely. Then you switch to Edit to build your main video project. You open Fusion to apply complex and professional effects. Color to make color corrections, like a photographer. And Fairlight to work with audio, make recordings, and mix sound. Once your project is ready, you open the Deliver workspace to render and export. In this video, we will just see the basic workspaces you need as a beginner. You can always come back to the Project Manager page with the Home button. On the Edit workspace, you can import pictures, videos, and audio files by dragging and dropping these from any folder into the Media Pool panel on the left. You can also check each file on the main preview on the right by double-clicking on it. Then, drop these files into the project timeline at the bottom to start working with these. The timeline is the place where you will edit and build your custom video. All files are shown as colored blocks, called clips, as much long as they last in time. Videos and pictures are collected inside video tracks in blue color, whereas speech and sound content inside audio tracks in green color at the bottom. To play back and check the timeline clips, you can use the player above and watch the preview. This shows content where the red marker is placed in time, so you can move it by clicking or dragging on the timeline to check any singular frame or any sequence of these. For a faster preview, you can go to Timeline View Options on the left to show bigger thumbnails and audio volume waveforms on clips. You can also zoom in and out over these with your mouse wheel while holding down the Alt key and move through time with the Shift key. To save your current project, use Command or Control on Windows and S. Make sure to save often, especially when you see either a yellow or a red edited word on top. Now let's see how to edit the timeline clips with the selection mode enabled. Click and drag any clip to move it through time with the same track or in another one. You will create new tracks if not present yet. When you drag videos with audio, both clips are moved together, being these linked. You can make these independent by right-clicking and going to Link Clips. Pay attention if you overlap clips in time. If you overlap any with the same track, the one behind gets cut. Whereas if they are placed on different tracks, the preview shows the clip on the top video track in front of all the others lower in the track order. To adjust any clip duration, drag from its edges. Depending on the cursor shape, you will stop at the next clip or go over it. 
You can stretch video and audio clips up to their maximum length and shorten these in time by removing part of their content. You can also stretch and shorten any clip by acting on its playback speed instead of cutting content. If you right click on it and go to change clip speed, you can set its speed in percentage such as above 100% for a faster and shorter clip or below 100% for a slower and longer clip. From this panel, you can also reverse the clip or change its audio pitch. To make copies of any clip, just drag from it while holding down the Alt key, whereas use the Backspace key to remove it. To split clips in multiple pieces, enable the Blade Edit Mode and click on these. Remember to use Command or Control on Windows and Z to undo any action if you make any mistake. On the left side, you have several options to manage each track. Use the lock button to lock any modification on the current track. Enable the frame button to hide or show the video track content. Whereas on any audio track, you can use the mute button to mute it and the solo button to mute all the other tracks but the current one. To remove any track, right click on it. To correct and enhance any clip, select it and open the inspector panel on the right. On Resolve 17, this is completely new with several sections from video to file. On each section, you can show or hide options by clicking on their name and adjust these by dragging on the slider or the values, clicking twice to type directly. If you do not see any modification on the preview, make sure that that clip is not overlapped by other clips on top video tracks. You can also use the Revert button to reset any property and the orange button to turn off or on an entire set of options. When you select images or videos, you can open the video section to adjust their appearance. With Transform, you can place, scale, and rotate the clip using Anchor Point to set the rotation point. Pitch and yaw to 3D rotate on different axes, and also the flip buttons to flip horizontally or vertically. Under cropping, you can crop the clip from several sides, adding feather with softness. You can also transform and crop the clip faster and easier with the tools on the extreme left. With transform, you move scale, and rotate the clip on the preview, clicking and dragging the box or using its nodes. With Crop, you can do the same to crop directly. Make sure to have these tools enabled or you won't see any node on the preview. With Dynamic Zoom, you can add animated pan and zoom effects on the clip. From the inspector, you find ready presets. Whereas with the dedicated tool, you can make custom zooms by editing both the green start rectangle and the red end directly on the preview. When you play back the clip, the animation is performed by following the properties changing between the two. In addition, you can go to composite and add transparency. Stabilization to remove shakiness from any video and lens correction to remove any distortion given by your camera. Another useful tool is called annotations and allows you to drop notes and sketches by clicking and dragging on the preview. Under audio, 
You can adjust the volume level of the clip and also balance its left and right stereo channels with pan. Adjust the audio tone with pitch and apply professional band filters with equalizer. Moreover, if you select raw images, you can open the image section to apply advanced corrections on brightness and contrast, add color filters, or set color intensity with saturation. You can also switch to the color workspace for the full set of professional color correction and color grading tools, including wheels, tone curves, and advanced color scopes. To learn more about the color workspace, watch our dedicated tutorial. All these inspector properties can be changed in time with special markers called keyframes. On the interested property, click on the diamond button, and then open the envelope button on the selected clip. If you do not see it, just zoom in on the clip enough. At this point, the property graph opens, showing an envelope completely flat and static. They can be pulled up or down to another value. By moving the marker and using the top diamond button, you can add multiple keyframes on the envelope in order to shape it as you like. You can move these keyframes horizontally in time and vertically in value and use the options on the top to adjust the curve. You can have multiple properties changing in time as well. To remove any keyframe, select it and use Command or Control and X. To remove all of them, just reset the property from the inspector. From the effects library on the left, you can add great visual and audio effects, transitions, and amazing pieces of text. You can get a quick preview of these by hovering over their name and applying these by dragging and dropping on the timeline. You can apply three main kinds of effects. Open FX for visual effects, audio FX for audio effects, and under toolbar effects, use the fusion effects, which are complex compositions ready to use and realize with the fusion workspace. We won't see the fusion effects in workspace in this tutorial. Make sure to catch our dedicated video to learn more. When you add any effect on a clip, this shows an FX icon and a new effects section on its inspector panel. This lists all the fusion, open FX, and audio effects applied on such clip that you can adjust while checking the preview. Use the orange button to turn on and off the effects, the arrows to change the effects order, and the bin button to remove the effect permanently. Video and audio transitions are special effects used to introduce or end any clip. You can drop these on clip edges or between two clips if these overlap for a short time. You can also extend or shorten these in time to adjust their speed and open the transition section inside the inspector panel to set its properties. To change the transition effect, drag another on it and use the backspace key to remove it instead. Under titles, you can find static titles, animated fusion titles, and also subtitles. These generate gray title clips on the timeline that shall be put on top video tracks not to get overlapped by other clips. You can open the inspector panel to adjust visual appearance under settings and text properties under title, such as text font, style, color, outline, or shadow. In case of fusion titles, you can manage multiple pieces of text, opening the fusion workspace to customize their final appearance. 
To export and upload your video, open the Deliver workspace. Adjust the highlighted region to set what to export, and under Render Settings, set all video options. You can select any ready template for YouTube and Vimeo, up to HD or 4K. Go for a direct upload to Twitter, or take suitable formats for ProRes, Final Cut, Premiere, and Pro Tools. Choose Audio Only to export just the audio part. Under Custom, you can fix custom options, including video size, frame rate, bit rate, and other advanced properties. On top, define video name and location, and go to Add to Render Queue to import all these video and audio options as a new job on the right. You just have to select it and go to Start Render at the bottom to start exporting it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Visit our YouTube channel if you want to discover more about DaVinci Resolve and its amazing features.